like we are uh, down in the feature match areas. Again, we have Tom Ross on blue-green Infect. Philip Lauren is on Affinity. They are both currently 1-0. and Now, it is a little, little interesting to see Tom playing in round two since he usually, uh, all of last year, had a bunch of buys. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't had a ton of success on the SCG Tour uh, the first couple tournaments, but he does have enough points that I think he's going to try and make another run uh, at that Players' Championship this year. Uh, Tom has started out on a... Uh, an Ink Moth Nexus in the battle of the decks that play a bunch of Nexuses. Yep. Uh, Philip Lauren with an explosive affinity start. Darksteel Citadel. Plague, uh, Plague Stinger. His, uh, no, that's the Vault Scourge. Mm -hmm. uh, he does have a Signal Pest. And these alternate art cards are going to get me. Oh, yeah. And a Mox Opal. Yeah, I mean, this is really showing one of the stri how affinity can just get onto the board really fast. I mean, he's deployed four cards by turn two. Or, uh, no, no, excuse me, let's turn, turn one. one. Yeah, yeah, turn one. Really, really, really good. So Tom is just going to go with a Forest and a Spell Skite. Uh, it's, it's very good that Affinity has these flying creatures against Tom, since it's going yeah. to shut off his ability to take advantage of a uh, limited number of blockers with his Ink Moth Nexus. But Spell Skite is going to give him some, some game against the Affinity deck uh, because it stops the modular ability on Arcbound Ravager. Yeah, you are able to, to redirect it to your Spell Skite. Super, super, super relevant. Another thing that will be interesting about this matchup is typically when you have two really aggressive decks like this, sometimes you'll have them essentially be two ships passing in the night where they're essentially racing each other and mm -hmm. trying not to interact with each other. And for the opening turns of the game, that's probably what we'll see, where each player is kind of looking to just curve out and obliterate the other person. But if the game goes long, a lot of times you'll actually see things transition into players making a lot of trades and mm -hmm. kind of grinding each other out. Well, it looks like Philip is doing everything he can to make this game not go long. He's had an explosive turn. Thought cast on the cheap for one mana. Another Mox Opal with the new Legend rule, so he gets to keep that one. Cranial Plating, equip it, and attack for a whole bunch of damage. Now, there is a chance this game that Tom Ross might die to infect damage, since Philip Lauren does have an Ink Moth Nexus and a Cranial Plating on the battlefield. Uh, but Tom is... Uh, under a bit of a clock. He needs uh, to have some kind of flyer to be able to block this signal pest. Uh, it, he does have that Ink Moth Nexus, but it's never really a good feeling when you have to trade in one of your best win conditions for an 01. For sure. And one thing that's particularly interesting about this is Philip, even though he was on the draw, he's really stolen the initiative. Yeah, that imagine if he was on the play. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it. it, it the, the game would be over. <laughs> Tom Ross would be sideboarding. But uh, but in particular, I think what gave Philip the ability to kind of steal the initiative away from Tom is that Mox. I think that was one of the, the key cards to kind of give him a mana boost, let him come out a little more ahead, and then Cranial Plating be basically the the biggest payoff. heavy hitter in the entire Affinity deck is also really important. Now, because of the nature of Infect and the creatures have dealing double damage, basically, since you'll need 10 Infect, Philip could just die here. Yeah, you always got to watch out with the Infect deck. And Tom Ross... Depending, on, depending on how many mutagenic growths Tom has, Philip could just die He only has here. one. He does have a Become Immense, though. Yeah. So we'll see what Tom Ross can cobble together here. He, doesn't, he only has green mana, but he has a Misty Rainforest in his hand, so he does have access to blue mana. So we'll see what he wants to do here. And he's not dead this turn, so he could just try and get in some, some chip Infect damage and hope that Philan doesn't... Philip doesn't kill him on the backswing and then try and win the following turn. So he does have Rancor in his hand, which will allow him to trample over a potential blocker. Yeah, the one thing that's a little bit of an issue is that if he sticks it on the Nexus, it's just going to fall off at the end of the turn, which is a little annoying. Yeah. Well, that's not going to matter if he just uses it. That uses the trample for that turn when he attacks. For sure. So it looks like he's just going to Groundswell here. Uh, he did play a land, so he does get the full plus four, plus four. He gets his... Patented Tom Ross poison token. Very, very slick. Going to get in for five, di five infect damage here with his Ink Moth Nexus. And Phillip's already half dead. Yeah, and I mean, this is, uh, this is really displaying how each of these decks have been working. I mean, each player has essentially only taken one attack step, and each attack step was essentially the half of their opponent's life. Yep, so Phil Philip here is going to play an Ornithopter. He's got a Blink Moth Nexus. He's doing some math to see if he can actually kill Tom this turn. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He, uh, it looks like he can only do 10 actual points of damage this turn. Yeah, he just played the Blink Moth Nexus this so turn, so attack. he can attack with it. But he can activate it to increase his artifact count. Now, had he had relevant. Blink Moth Nexus uh, instead of the Ink Moth Nexus on turn two, this would actually be a lethal attack. Yeah, absolutely. How crazy is that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I wasn't kidding when I said that these decks were fast <laughs> and furious. 
Now Philip is uh, only attacking with the Volt Scourge and the Signal Pest. So we're going to get in one, two, three, four, five, six. And what I really like about this play damage. from Philip is essentially he's just attacking with enough to ensure that he'll be able to kill his opponent next turn and is leaving behind the maximum number of blockers. Yeah, so, so the amount of toughness that he's going to have available here is going to be two from the Ornithopter. He'll have one from each of the Nexus, and then he can use the Blink Moth Nexus to pump one of the other Nexus. Right. So that's going to give him two, three, four, five total toughness. So he's going to need... Tom's going to have to have... Uh, five, ten points of trample infect actually win this turn and still protect his creature through a uh, potential galvanic blast if we want to knock off one point of toughness there. Yeah, not sure if this affinity player has galvanic blast. It seems like he has a dismember. Uh, he does have a galvanic blast in his hand. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. So Tom does have a Misty Rainforest, which is going to give him access to blue mana, but I think we're to the point where I don't know how much that's going to affect anything. Yeah, it seems like at this point Tom has to make a decision if he's playing offense or defense. Philip has been on the offense the whole time, and Tom seems to be putting the brakes on because he knows that he cannot race his opponent. If Tom goes for an attack, he'll get some infect damage in maybe, but he'll die on the crackback. Yeah, and it looks like he does have uh, two Vines of the Vastwood in his hand. Uh, and that Rancor along with another land. So he doesn't really have a whole lot that he can get going right now. And is the pressure, well, I don't want to say the pressure, but Philip is looking in a position to just try and end this game right now. Yeah, Philip is is going for a pretty big attack. All of his creatures get plus one, plus zero. That's why the Ornithopter is coming in also. And we'll see how much gets pushed through here. Looks, Looks like, like only it's just going to be three. Yeah. I think that he might just try and use this Galvanic Blast to finish the game here on the spot. Do it. Oh, he's just going to play another creature. Just the safe play. Well, he's got the spell skite, but it seems like it would be worth it to make. So he, he, he can't use his fetch land. Yeah. I, now, in that situation for Philip, I, I'm wondering why he didn't just activate his Blink Moth Nexus and attack. That would have posed a lethal damage based on the board that Tom had, and he would have had to have something to, to interact with that. Yeah, for sure. That could have been a good play. It might, he might have been playing around something that we're not thinking of right now, but either way, he had more than he needed, he, and yeah, he, you know, he could kind of do whatever he wanted. Yeah, just a plethora of riches. So it looks like we're going to go to a, to the sideboard here. Uh, Philip, again, on Affinity. Tom Ross on Blue-Green Infect. So from Philip's side, he has three Thoughtseize, two Whip Flare, two Ancient Grudge, one Dismember, one Spell Pierce, two Spell Skite, an Etch Champion, a Relic of Progenitus, a Torpor Orb, and a Blood Moon. So what do you think Philip's going to do here in this match? So I, uh, I think that bringing in the Thoughtseize and the Whip Flare will be good. Uh, the Dismember may also come in. There can be an argument for Spell Pierce, also Spell Skite on his side. Basically, what he wants to do is Tom's Ross, Tom's deck is primarily based around having a creature and a pump spell. Those are kind of the two mm -hmm. halves of what he's trying to do. And if Philip can break it up by either killing the creatures or making him discard or counter the pump spells, then that, that can be a really great way for Philip to disrupt what Tom's doing. That being said, Philip really wants to make sure that he doesn't water down his own game plan. We saw in that last game that the way that Philip won was just by having an explosive start, having all of his cards be able to convert to damage, and Philip was able to end the game really, really quickly because he had all of those synergies online. So he might want to take away some of the cards in his deck, and out of the cards that I listed, he may not want to bring all of them, but I do think that those are the cards that are essentially on the table for his side. Yeah, it's one of the tough things about sideboarding with a deck like Affinity is you're so synergy-based that you really can't dilute that too much when you, right. do, when you do sideboard, uh, which is why you see that there's usually a lot of you know, ones, twos, or three ofs in the sideboard uh, that are just cards that are super high impact so they can bring them in in the matchups where they're going to get the most bang for their buck. Uh, now Tom does have four Nature's Claim, two Twisted Image, two Spell Pierce, one Dispel, one Rancor, one Wild Defiance, two Relic of Progenitus, a Pithy Needle, and a Necropede in his sideboard. What do you think he's going to do here? So I think that the Nature's Claim and the Twisted Image are definitely cards that can be really, really good. The Nature's Claim obviously just kills anything. Twisted Image can kill some really, really problematic artifacts like Spell Skites from his opponent 
or uh, you know they have some some other utility. Again, though, Tom doesn't want to water his strategy down yeah. too much, so I wouldn't be surprised if he just doesn't bring in the twisted image and only brings in nature's claim. It is pretty nice to be able to kill like ornithopter and signal pest with that twisted image. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing too is we saw in the previous game that Tom had a very defensive hand. He was ready to fight disruption. He had his spell skite. He had his uh, the vast wood pump spell, and basically he kind of drew the the worst part of his deck to face against Affinity. So some of the cards that we saw him draw this past game may be some of the cards that he takes out. Absolutely. Now, Tom has been playing uh, Infect in Modern and Legacy for quite some time, uh, and he was able to, to to parlay that into a Players' Championship worth last year. Yep. Uh, and so we're going to take a look at the uh, the Season 1 schedule. Uh, so these are the, ma the tournaments that our players are going to be playing and trying to collect those open points to get back to the Players' Championship this year. So we had the Las Vegas Invitational was uh, back in December, which was won by Caleb Schur. Uh, Brian, Bra player. Brian Bronduin won the Standard Open. Uh, last weekend we were in Cincinnati uh, playing Modern, won by Bobby Fortinelli on Amulet Bloom. This weekend we're in Charlotte. Who also wrote a really great article he actually on Star did. City. Yeah. He actually did. Uh, as an Amulet lover myself, I can appreciate people that... Uh, have honed their craft with the yeah, deck. And that's he, great. He did have some great insight. Uh, we're going to be in Atlanta, January 23rd and 24th, which is the Oath of the Gatewatch release weekend. So come sling your new spells there in Atlanta, yeah. playing Standard. We'll be in Columbus for Standard. And then we have the Regional Championships uh, the 6th of February, which is going to be Modern. Uh, after that, we'll be in Louisville for some more Modern. Philly for Legacy. Finally, Legacy, and you and yep. I are going to get to cover that one, so it's yeah. going to be real nice. Can't wait. Uh, we'll be in Indianapolis after that for Standard, then Baltimore for Standard, and closing it up in Columbus uh, April 15th through 17th uh, for our Invitational Standard and Modern with a Standard Top 8. Now, one of the real neat things that you get for playing in any of our Opens oh, is so this adorable. real cute play mat. Yeah, super sweet. I really like all the play mats. They're just so fun. I, wh one thing I like about this one is the the cat or the the links in the back. It almost looks like he's got goggles and he's smoking a pipe. He's like some sort of steampunk. Links. He's like getting ready for Burning Man or something. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is our kitchen links. He's a play hipster mat. links. It's a hipster links. He's been. He was, he was using the mat before. It was cool. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So. Uh, again, you can get those mats at any of our mod or any of our opens, absolutely free, just for playing in the open. So make sure you check that out. Yeah. So we're back here for game two, uh, round two. Tom Ross on Blue Green Infect against Philip Lauren playing Affinity. Uh, Philip is up a game, and Tom is going to lead on Breeding Pool, uh, taking two damage and casting a Noble Hierarch. Noble Hierarch, I think, is one of the cards that makes this Infect deck tick in modern. It's just such a big upgrade from the mono green version that was in standard. For sure. I mean, Tom Ross's deck is all about. Uh, getting in underneath your opponent's defense, having a really powerful, fast draw. Noble Hierarch, not only does it give you a mana boost, but it also gives you a power and toughness boost when you're attacking. Particularly relevant in the Infect deck because it's normally only playing with one creature. In that last match, we saw Philip kind of steal the initiative with a Mox, whereas Tom now is getting to do a little bit more because he has a Noble Hierarch, but he's missing land drops and Philip is on the board in a big way. Yeah, so. Again, Philip looks like he stole the initiative again here. Explosive first turn, uh, Darksteel Citadel, uh, Signal Pest, Signal Pest, uh, with the Mox, played a second Mox into a Vault Scourge, uh, and is now playing Ink Moth Nexus on his second turn. He just has a huge board presence at this point, and uh, Tom is going to need to do some work to, to get through it. However, he does have an infect creature on the battlefield, and if he's able to punch through some damage, he can end the game very quickly. Yeah, and so you can really see it with the affinity deck how explosive of a draw it can get. It can get so many permanents on the board, but without any of those big payout cards, they, it actually doesn't really amount to that much. I mean, currently, Philip, it, his draw looks really impressive, but he's not actually attacking for that much damage. He really needs something like a cranial plating or an arcbound ravager to really do something. Yep. Now, Tom using uh, a dismember to deal four damage to himself uh, is going to help Philip along trying, trying to get some damage through. Uh, however, we are going to see here that uh, Tom does have a uh, twisted image in his hand, so he's going to get to pick off one of these signal pests. He was able to attack with that uh, Glistener Elf. Uh, it was blocked by an Ink Moth Nexus on Philip's side, but because of the plus one, plus one, uh, from the Exalted. Uh, it is going to live through the combat, but unfortunately it's going to die once that yeah, wears off. That, uh, that card has an expiration date. we got to call a doctor because he's a dead nerd. <laughs> uh, so it looks like here Tom is going to lose his creature. He doesn't have another land, it seems. 
So he is definitely in a tough spot. Look at him just flick that die away. He's like, <laughs> I knew this was dead all along. He knows. Get that die out of here. Yeah, so one thing that's pretty interesting about this is neither of them are having explosive enough starts to actually kill each other. And so unlike last game where we really saw that it was a race, this game where both players have access to sideboard cards, they're able to take away the cards that are worse in the matchup and bring in some better pieces of disruption, we can see that Tom is really going into a game plan that's a bit more focused on disruption. And, and we so are is seeing Phillip. both players disrupting. Tom is just going to Nature's Claim, uh, a Mox, the Mox is going to tap for red mana to Galvanic Blast, the Noble High Arc, and they just both have nothing. Now, uh, one of the interesting things is the nothing that Philip has uh, looks like he just got a couple lands. That Foil Glimmer Void actually looks a little bit like a Thought Cast for a second, yeah, but that it would is be not a, a Thought Cast, draw. and that is going to be a good draw. Now, Tom has just finally drawn another land with a Ink Moth Nexus, probably the perfect land, and is able to play Blighted Agent. And this game could end very quickly because he does have a Become Immense in his hand and quite a few cards in his graveyard already from all the interaction. Yeah, Tom, Tom is in a pretty good position. He's successfully disrupted his opponent's draw and dismantled it while not having so much disruption on his own that he didn't have room for some of his own proactive plan. A lot of times in these aggro matches, uh, post-board, things slow down and they become a grind. But if you just have all disruption and you're not actually clocking your opponent, a lot of times it doesn't amount to much. But Tom, we're able to see, has that clock and has that disruption. So he's working with that money mix that you really want. Absolutely. It looks like Tom has found another Ink Moth Nexus off the top of his deck, which is allowing him to pressure Philip, which is one of the things that really makes these Infect decks uh, effective is that uh, you do have this disruption, uh, but you also have an insane clock because of just the nature of the infect mechanic. You're getting essentially double damage off of the damage that you're dealing to your opponent, uh, and it makes it so that games end very quickly. And we see that is highlighted even more in Legacy, where you get to take advantage of something like Days and Wasteland. Uh, in Modern here, we do get some of those cheap interactive spells. Uh, Philip, Philip, you did get four extra life from that nature's claim, but it's not really going to matter because you're sick. Yeah, you are you are vomiting sick. You're, <laughs> you've got eight infect counters, and you're not feeling good at all. One thing I like about Tom Ross's uh, previous play with the Become Immense was he was pretty sure that Philip didn't have anything because he had just drawn a card, played a land, and had left Tom Ross's... Uh, creature sit on the board, and so Tom Ross kind of capitalized on that opportunity, got his pump spell, because not only did he feel like the coast was clear, but also he was choked off on mana, and he just needed to fire off his spells. Absolutely, and again, uh, I, th the reason Tom kept that hand with only one land is he did have the Noble High Arc, yep. but as we see how the game played out, he had multiple copies of Nature's Claim, and that Twisted Image as ways to interact with the explosive early game cards that Philip could have in his deck, and it really paid off. Uh, Philip kind of flooded out a little bit there, uh, and by flooded out, I mean and he's playing Affinity and he drew four lands. Yeah. Um, but Tom was able to capitalize on that, even though he was a little hampered on mana at the beginning. Yeah, another thing to note, though, is despite Tom being hampered on mana, he basically had all one-mana spells. So that basically meant that even though he didn't have very many lands, he could still cast one or two spells a turn. So overall, it looked like he was not having that great of a draw, but the tempo at which he was able to impact the board was actually still quite good. Absolutely. Uh, so while the players are going to go back to their sideboard here, um, I honestly can't imagine that much is going to change on the player of the draw. Agreed. Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, new, very cute, and very awesome creature collection items that we have oh, here. Oh, man. The Games com. So uh, we do have the Grizzly brand. Uh, you can now get in play mats, sleeves, and player bundles. Uh, these are available now at go.starcitygames.com slash creature collection. And this is a parody of my favorite demon of all time. Oh, yeah. Gristle brand. So yeah. we've got the, the tree trunk claws and the picnic blanket kilt, and this card, or this, this art is pretty sweet. So what I want to know is if you have this and you pay seven life, what do you get? You get to seven picnic baskets. Seven picnic baskets? Wow. You're like, it's like a Yogi Bear yeah. type of grizzle you get, brand? You get all the picnic baskets. Yeah. And then we also have the zebra. So we've yeah. got this cute little zebra. Very uh, adorable. Hopefully it's running with the herd and not in the middle of a stampede. Yeah. Uh, but this is also available. Uh, play mat sleeves and player bundles. Once again, go.starcitygames.com slash creature collection. Uh, and uh, it is a tradition on coverage, at least from what I've seen, uh, that these things get named. Oh, so, really? So, so, so do we get to name them? Well, Can that be our job? Yeah. Let's, what are we going to name the zebra? Uh, well, it's got to be something that begins with a Z, right? That would only... Probably. How about... I do like alliterations. How about uh, 
I don't know, I'm not feeling particularly creative. Maybe just like Zachariah. How about Z that? Zach the zebra? I like Zachariah. Zachariah? Yeah. It's a little more regal. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have to, to check Twitter in between rounds and see yeah, if we have we'll any have good suggestions. But uh, uh, we definitely do need to come up with a name for the zebra. So again, make sure you check out those sweet creature collections. Yeah, they're very fun. Now, these games, what I find in the Affinity versus Infect matchup is the games are usually over fairly quickly, like we've seen the last yeah. couple of games or they just go real, real long. And both players are trying to grind out advantage with their creature lands, Ink Moth Nexus and Blink Moth Nexus. Yeah, a lot of that grinding is actually really tricky because typically these really aggressive decks, they don't have very many sources of actual card advantage. They're not playing cards like Treasure Cruise or Dig Through Time. Philip is playing uh, Thoughtcast, but a lot of his cards like Ornithopter can be blanks in a top deck war. So a lot of the times what things come down to is how you're lining up your cards. Mm -hmm. You're not you Tom doesn't want to fire off removal spells on every artifact he sees. He only wants to hit the most important ones. And Philip uh, from his side, he needs to be able to make sure that he's using his removal spells and his threats in a way that uh, basically, he can make it so that you have five cards, I have five cards, but my five cards beat your cards. Because you're not going to be able to grind them all the way down. Absolutely. So it looks like we're getting ready here for game three between Tom Ross and Philip Lauren. Uh, Philip's on Affinity, Tom is on Blue Green Infect. Philip did uh, Mulligan. Uh, looks like he scribed to the bottom and starts off with no land, but three who, permanents. Who still. needs it? Who needs lands? Nope, we've got two uh, Mem Knights. And then we have a Mox Opal as well. Now, he can even act, use the Mox Opal for mana, yeah. but he didn't have anything to cast there. So I have to imagine his hand is possibly, you know, some number of two mana artifacts like Cranial Plating uh, or some interactive spells like maybe uh, Spell Pierce out of the sideboard uh, or a something like Galvanic Blast. Yeah, well, he's certainly looking to draw something specifically more lands to make his draw better. But this is certainly like a good keep. He's got mana and he's got threats and he's developing his board, which is really what he wants to do. And he was able to scry a card to the bottom. So we oh, see so this was a mulligan also. This was a mulligan. So we see oh, Tom relevant. So we see Tom is going to fetch for a breeding uh, pool here. I with gotta a imagine that's catacombs, straight at the mox opal. And he's just gonna nature's claim the mox. No, oh, going for the just threat. Just going to hit him. I guess it turns off the mox technically. It does turn off the mox. That's absolutely true. The other thing too is that a lot of times, if you kill someone's lands, and the game's going to go long, they're just going to draw more lands at some point anyway. So Tom may be expecting a longer game, absolutely. and is just valuing his life total and his opponent's attacking potential. Plus, it plus it could have just been that Philip might have another mox in his hand. Is just waiting for a more explosive time to use it. Absolutely, and they are legendary. And this way, just cut, cuts off uh, his mana source without him having to actually be able to play another zero mana artifact. Yeah, one thing in particular with this is we're really seeing how Tom's sideboard cards are really pulling their weight in gold. He's really able to pick apart his opponent's draw. The affinity deck is very, very, very synergistic. A lot of the cards don't actually do that much without their big payouts, yep. whereas Tom, his he, he can kind of shift into almost like a Delver deck, where he just has a couple efficient threats, and then, and then you know, just, just a bunch of one mana vindicates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, Basically. we did see Tom here go with a forest into a Blighted Agent. It is going to take a Dismember off of a Timely Glimmer Void for yeah, Philip. A little tit for tat. And then we're passing back to Tom here. Now Tom is down to 15, uh, but that's still quite a far away from zero. In fact, Philip is closer to dead than Tom is technically, just going by the yeah. numbers. <laughs> uh, so we're going to see what Tom has here. Yeah, now he is just going to play a Windswept Heath and pass back. Now, the, this type of game plan from Infect is not nearly as uh, as workable as it is in Legacy when you have something like crop rotation to be able to find instant speed threats. Uh, so we are hoping, uh, well, Tom is hoping that he's able to, to find something here so we can Yeah, get the fact that going. Tom played a third land and had no plays on his turn is pretty telling. It means that he probably doesn't have a threat, although can't be 100% sure of that. It means that he's probably got a fair amount of disruption in his hand. And it probably also means that he's just expecting the game to go longer. Oh, he but he does just have some more one man of vindicates. Philip can gain all the life he wants. It's not really going to do much. He's just going to take care of the cranial plating with a nature's claim. Now it does look like Tom has uh, a twisted image in his hand. So it looks like he did he did continue to keep those in after the last game. And he's going to be able to snipe some of those zero power creatures. It's also interesting that he can kind of use that as a fog if he needs to against cranial plating. Yeah. So if they're attacking you with you know like an eight one, you can just make it a one eight for the turn and take take less damage and maybe swing back for the win with your infect creatures. So it does seem like it has a lot of potential applications in this match. 
Yeah, for sure. So far, it seems like Philip is really trying to make the game about tempo. He's used all of his mana every single turn. He's trying to be aggressive. And Tom is just saying, let's slow the game down. I can pick you apart. Uh, and that's basically the way things are playing out. And I think Tom is really trying to make them play out that way. Yep. So it looks like Philip has taken a draw for the turn. Uh, I do see that he has a Galvanic Blast in his hand. It looks like he might also have a Thought Cast, but he does have a Spell Skite, which is great going card. to be a great card if Tom didn't just have Twisted Image in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to see Tom's sideboard card is just going to pay off in spades here. Every time you get to kill a Spell Skite with a Twisted Image as an Infect player, you just kind of have to pu pump the fist internally oh, yeah. there. Definitely internal fist pump. And I'll draw a card. Yeah. A little insult to injury never hurt anyone. Uh, so Tom is going to use his Misty Rainforest on Philip's end step. He's going to pick up a breeding pool here, thin out his deck a little bit, do some shuffling, and maybe fire off that Twisted Image. Now, the one thing to note is Tom has been doing a really good job of disrupting his opponent, and the Twisted Image is a nice card to give, get a little bit of card advantage, but generally speaking, he's just going to be working with one-for-ones. And if we are just in a situation where Philip is putting out threats and slowly whittling Tom's life down, and Tom is just removing them one-for-one, Eventually, under that paradigm, Philip will start to whittle down Tom's life total. So at some point, Tom needs to mount some sort of offense. Uh, and it looks like he has done just that. He's finally found an Ink Moth Nexus off the top of his deck. It's going to play very well with the multiple copies of Vines of the Vast that are in his hand to be able to protect it from any potential removal spells that Philip might have. But Philip is just kind of choked on mana here at this point as he still can't even turn on his Mox Opal unless he plays another artifact. Yeah, Philip had a mulligan. He, I think he kept a good hand, but as always happens when you mulligan, sometimes things just don't come together exactly how you want. Absolutely. And Tom has just been able to, you know, pick Philip apart this match. Uh, you know, Philip's deck is just built around spending as little, you know, as little resources as possible into putting his threats on the battlefield. And Tom has just been able to use Nature's Claim, Nature's Claim, Twisted Image, just these cheap one mana spells to handle Philip's threat and even get some card draw off the Twisted Image. He just put himself in a good position this game. Yeah, I think what Philip really wants to draw right now is something like a, like a Ravager so that even if Tom kills it, he can still get some sort of value out of it and move the power and toughness around. This is also another great draw, though. This thought cast is going to be able to, you know, dig a little deeper in his deck and help him start pulling ahead and recoup some of the card advantage that he lost when Tom cast that twisted image. Absolutely. So he was able to thought cast into a Glimmer Void. It looks like he also has an Ornithopter. Uh, another see twisted another image. Another twisted image. So brutal. Tom is just twisting it all up in here. Now he does have that Ink Moth Nexus and a bunch of pump in his hand. Philip does have a blocker, so we're going to see if he decides to go for a block here when Tom attacks, since he could just take a whole bunch of damage. So does Tom have two Vines of the Vastwood or just one? It looks like he has two. He also picked up an Apostle's Blessing here, so he has a lot of potential to protect his creature against any, 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 any potential tricks that Philip might have. Well, it looks like Tom's in the tank, and I would be pretty worried if I was Philip, because when Tom's in the tank and you're mostly tapped out and he's got a bunch of mana, Things can get, yeah. uh, things are probably bad for you. Oh, so he, he is going to activate his Ink Mom Nexus. A main phase Might of Old Crosa is going to take it to wow, a 5 5. We could be looking at game right now. We could. Looks like he does have another Might of Old Crosa in his hand. So it looks like those were Might of Old Crosa and not Vines of the Vastwood. Oh, maybe. Well, still, they're. He might have them both. Yeah, I mean, they're still both going to be able to counter the Galvanic Blast. So the last card in Philip's hand, his last hope to make sure that he doesn't die this turn. But if Tom can beat this Galvanic Blast, there's a good chance he wins this game. Yeah, absolutely. Now, it looks like we do have Metalcraft, so it is going to do four damage. Uh, but that's not really going to matter, since all of the pump spells that Tom's going to have will potentially keep it alive. Now, an interesting line here is Tom might just save it and then only attack for five and see if he decides to block with his Vault Scourge or not. That way, next turn, he can use Apostle's Blessing to give it protection from artifacts and be able to attack through everything with his Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, Tom is certainly a master. He's been in this situation a long time. He has a lot of options. And one of the things I'm most excited about seeing a master like Tom Ross play this deck is because you get to see how he prioritizes which pump spells he wants to use. The fact that he led with Might of Old Crosa is no mistake at all. Yeah, yeah absolutely not. He definitely has played, played this game uh, well, this deck in and out for quite some time. I imagine he's played against Affinity a bunch. Uh, he has a bunch of SCG points that he's earned over the yeah. last couple of years with Infect. So he is a master of his craft. So anyone who's out there who's playing Infect, you got to get your notebook. You got to pull it out. You got to rewatch this video, and you got to take notes because this is 
This is how you learn from the master. So, so it looks like Tom's going to be bashing in for nine. Yeah, now there's a chance that he just uses his Apostle's Blessing here to make it so that Philip's not able to block. Well, he just wants to eat the creature. So, okay, so he's just going to eat the creature and then play a Glistener Elf and pass. So what's interesting about that is he could have used the Apostle's Blessing, but since he didn't, essentially he traded two of his Mitovold Crosa for a Galvanic Blast and a Blocker. So it's kind of a, a two for two trade, essentially. It's definitely a two for two, but then again, Tom still has an Ink Moth Nexus on the battlefield, which right. can't be blocked by Philip. And he, he was well, able. To, he was able. He was able to put another another creature onto the battlefield. Yeah, he does have a, a blink moth nexus that right. we're able to block. Still, I think Tom is making this game go exactly how he wants it to. He, we saw that he didn't go for a big combo finish. Essentially, he didn't use the apostle's blessing. He valued saving it so that it could trade with a card rather than just convert to damage. And yep. you know, from the very beginning of this game, we can see that Tom Ross's plan the whole time was to just take out the key pieces of his opponent's draw and, you know, just play for the long game. Absolutely. So Tom has been able to pick up a copy of Pith and Needle here. It's like he's played it. Uh, in response, Philip uh, activated his Blink Moth Nexus. It looks like Tom named Blink Moth Nexus with the Pith and Needle. So that's going to shut off the, uh, the pump ability from it as well as the actual ability to activate into a creature. And now Philip doesn't have a flyer. He doesn't have a blocker for the uh, Ink Moth Nexus. And Tom is just going to be able to you know, start getting in that infect damage at his leisure. And to add insult to injury, it looks like Philip has picked up another copy of Blink Moth Nexus. Oh, for the no. Turn. So that pithy needle, a one of in Tom's sideboard, I think is going to yep. put the needle in the coffin for Philip here. Tom is looking through his graveyard, which symbols that he might have drawn to become immense. He does have oh. three copies in his 60. And now he's moving a little faster. He knows exactly what he needs to do. He doesn't need to play around things as much anymore. He's just got a, a lock on this game state. Absolutely. So Tom has activated his Blink Moth Nexus with a Forest, attacking in with that Nexus and a Glistener Elf. Philip does have a Mem Knight that he can block with, but just has a lowly second copy of Mox Opal in his hand. And the writing is just about on the wall at this point. Philip decided to go with no attack, which is very risky. Yeah, the no he, attack, he, no block. As, as he could have just been stone dead to a lot of cards. Tom is yeah. just going to get into and play it a little bit slow as he does have a pump spell and a protection spell in his hand. So Philip's going to need a, a series of draws here to be pretty fabulous to win. He did pick up Cranial Plating, which is one of the cards that he might have needed to actually win this game. Yeah, that'll certainly be good, but Tom has done such a good job of trading that Philip just doesn't have that many artifacts. So his Cranial not. Plating isn't nearly as strong as it normally would have been. I mean, he's got three artifacts. It's his his uh, Memnite's only a four one. It not being able to activate those Blink Moth Nexus has really hurt him this game. That Pithy yeah. Needle is doing a lot of work. Yeah, and we could see last turn, Tom. He attacked with his uh, one one on the ground, and he was completely willing to trade with that Memnite. If Tom got the extra damage, that would be great. But if he didn't, it would mean a trade. So it's kind of a win-win scenario because Philip's deck is really about reaching a critical mass of artifacts, where Tom. Uh, you know, his, his, his threats are still fine on their own in this sort of situation. Yeah, absolutely. So Tom is just going to fire up that Ink Moth Nexus, get in for one poison. Uh, he's going to put Philip up to three. He's leaving back that Glistener Elf. I imagine he's just going to put it in front of that uh, yeah. Mem Knight with the Cranial Plating on it. So, yeah, so I would assume so. Philip has drawn into another land. It's a Dark Steel Citadel. It is an artifact, so that brings the artifact count up one, two, to four. It's going to attack for five. I imagine he's just going to put the Glistener Elf in front. Yep, go for the trade. That's all Tom wants to do. He just now, wants to have a little pressure. He, he might just use Apostle's Blessing here to save his Glistener Elf. He might. I don't know. We'll see how much Tom values it. He may, he may want to hold on to the Apostle's Blessing just so that he can protect his Ink Moth Nexus because I think that is the more valuable threat. Yeah, just, just be able to attack un, un, unimpeded. Right. So it looks like Tom is, uh, for his turn, it looks like he drew a Spell Skite. At this point, it's just going to. Yeah, and Tom. Tom is there. really getting ahead. I mean, he's got the vines of the vastwood as protection. He's got the apostle's blessing as protection. He's got the spell sky as protection. Philip needs to have multiple blockers line up, and it looks like he just drew a spring leaf drum. Yeah, just drawing more and more mana. So Philip's going to play that sp spring leaf drum. Uh, it's going to continue to power up his cranial plating, but it's currently not equipped to anything, and. Just kind of sitting there. Yeah, and I mean, this, this also highlights one of the problems about playing 
an aggro deck, but playing for the long game, is you have no control over your draw. You don't have an ability to draw more cards as the game goes on. And so sometimes when you're playing an aggro deck, if you try to set yourself up for a longer game, but you don't have those good sources of card advantage, you just hit a chunk of your deck that just has four or five lands in a row, yeah. and that can just be game over for you. We've really seen here uh, in these last two games, Tom's sideboard has just really been the highlight of this match. For those sure. nature claims have been invaluable, just like I said earlier, one mana vindicates. You know, over the course of two games, it's been able to kill like four or five permanents with just nature's claim by itself. Twisted Image has gotten a lot of value. He's just been able to use his one mana spells to one for one his opponent, uh, but it's just setting Philip back so far. Yeah, it really is. And you can also see how Tom's uh, creatures are individual, or all of his cards essentially are individually better than Philip's. If Tom reduces the amount of resources that each player has, Tom can work with less resources than Philip can. So it looks like Tom has picked up. Uh, Another twisted image, but Philip is at five infect. Tom is going to attack with Ink Mock, ne Ink Mock Nexus. Philip isn't going to be able to do Activate anything it. about it. I'm just going to going to hit hit him for the full five, uh, and just kill him dead. Tom the Boss Ross takes it down. Oh man, I love watching Tom Ross play. He's one of my favorite players to watch. Just he's always playing something really aggressive. There's always these sweet lines of play where he just kind of blows his opponent out in one way or the other. You know, it's always just just one of the most exciting players to watch on the on the SCG tour. Yeah, I really enjoy watching Tom play. Uh, uh you know, on coverage and matches. I traveled with him a whole lot last year. Oh, lucky uh, you. When I was in Roanoke. A little uh, humble brag there. I mean, he doesn't talk a lot. <laughs> so He uh, doesn't need to talk. No, he doesn't. But uh, he, he just hangs out in his cool leather jacket. Yeah, he's just yeah, he just brought it back. He brought yeah. it back for the Players' Championship. Uh -huh. uh, he's wearing it this year. I imagine he's going to make a run at it along with some of the other folks there in Roanoke. Uh, I, I actually really...